This video is brought to you by Aralik, makers of the Vega G 2.1 streaming deck. Click to aralik.com for more information. So I'm going to start today's video with an email from a reader called Edwin, who wrote to me with a subject line, the hair situation. And he wrote, hi, John. I think Olaf should use the hair clippers on you if this situation continues. He's talking about the headphone video, I think. In my opinion, battery powered sounds better. Edwin. Well, the battery powered thing, that's a debate we can have another time. Although I would say that not all battery power sounds better than all other kinds of power. It depends upon the implementation, like everything in hi-fi. But Edwin, I've sorted my hair. I sorted it two weeks ago, buddy. Thank you for your concern. Didn't need all that. I just sat on a chair upstairs, got the clippers out, done. And yeah, it looks quite confrontational still. Purple Mountains. It's an indie rock album from 2019. And I've only just discovered this. This is by David Berman, who used to be the main guy behind the Silver Jews. And he unfortunately died a month after this album came out. And I've just been hammering this record. It, I just absolutely love it. It's just sort of sing along indie rock, not in a twee kind of way. It's, the humor is very, very dark. But this has saved me from just endlessly playing gas albums or just very dark electronic records. And as you can see, I'm using Rune to stream this. This is new Rune version 1.8. And I use Rune because most of the devices that get sent to me are Rune ready, or in the case of the Kef LSX here, Rune tested. It means that I can stream Rune to them and it will work flawlessly. So over here, I've got a DCS Bartok, Mola Mola Tambaki. Upstairs, I've got a name Muso. In my kitchen, I'm just using a laptop connected to a pair of Genlex speakers that go through an RME DAC, but I can still stream to that situation. It still becomes a Rune endpoint. And then other Rune endpoints that I have just here, Raspberry Pi 4. So I can put an operating system on this and that turns it into a Rune endpoint. Then I connect that to a DAC. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 with a hat on top. So I can output Toslink and Spidoff into a DAC in case my DAC doesn't have USB. It's pretty useful. I think most people will know what this is. This is the uh, now discontinued Google Chromecast audio. Rune will stream to this as well. Not as a Rune ready endpoint, but they've managed to sort of reverse engineer the software so that this becomes and shows up as a streaming endpoint inside Rune. So again, that could go Toslink out into a DAC. We've seen this quite a lot recently, actually. This is the Blue Sound Power Node 2i. This is a streaming amplifier. Speaker terminals on the back. And this is also Rune ready, so I can stream to this. And then the Q Acoustics Q Active 200. Their streaming hub will be Rune ready soon. It's not Rune ready at the time I'm making this video, but it will be soon. So anyway, like many, many different devices that I can stream to around my house from Rune. Now, where do the streams come from? Well, I've got a Rune Nucleus set up in my kitchen, way up high on the top of a shelf, so it's out of the way. I've got a hard drive full of tunes connected to the back. But the Rune software on that Nucleus also integrates my Tidal account and my Cobas account. So I can stream from those as well. I don't think we'll ever see Spotify inside Rune because Spotify is a giant and relatively speaking, Rune is a minnow. That's not to take anything away from what Rune have achieved. They have become, for many audiophiles, the de facto standard for streaming around the house. 
that doesn't mean it won't stream MP3s or anything like that. Of course it will. But most people, I think, integrate their Tidal and their Cobas so that they, they can make use of the higher quality tiers that offer CD quality streaming and high res streaming. At least that's what I do. And then Spotify is taken care of by Spotify Connect. So my DCS does Spotify Connect. I can get my Raspberry Pis to do Spotify Connect. The Blue Sound Power Node 2i does Spotify Connect. And then this thing sort of does Spotify Connect. It, you know, you can do Spotify through Chromecast. So I'm really not worried about it, Spotify being integrated into Rune because I don't really need it because Spotify Connect takes care of that and it keeps me inside the app. But anyway, I want to talk today about the Rune Nucleus because it's based on the Intel Nook platform. They've taken the fan out, they passively cool it with the chassis, which is a very attractive sort of ribbed metal chassis. And for me, I think it's a wonderful design object. But not everybody thinks that way. Not everybody thinks it's worth spending 1,500 euros on essentially a music server like that, especially when you're gonna tuck it away somewhere, as I have. I mean, sometimes it sits here, but I put it in the kitchen just to reinforce the message that th these are the streaming endpoints and the server is somewhere else in the house and they are not physically connected. So what we're gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you how you can build a Rune server that does exactly the same stuff. It has the same functionality as the Nucleus, but we're gonna do it for at least a thousand dollars cheaper than it sells for. So I'm going to show you how to build a dedicated Rune server. So it just runs Rune Core. That's what the Rune guys call the server component of their software. And so when you log into Rune, you'll be asked where your core is. And many people run that component on a Windows machine or on a Mac. But today we're going to be creating a dedicated machine that actually runs something called Rock, which is Rune Optimized Core Kit. Now what that is, that's an operating system that, that is essentially a very, very slimmed down version of Linux that just runs Rune. You can't do anything else with it. And it has to run on a Nook. And I have one of those here. I'll put all the links in the description below, but this is a, this is a Nook and this is made by Intel. I've taken it out of the box actually. It's here, it's a little small, PC, but there's no hard drive in here yet. We have to install it. In here is a motherboard and a CPU. This is the hard drive. I'm gonna open it up, I'll show you. I'll show you why it's quite unusual because we used to seeing hard drives like this, right? Now this kind of hard drive, if I can get the plastic open, there we go. This kind of hard drive actually looks a little bit like RAM. It's a Samsung 500 gigabyte drive. Please don't email me about anti-static bands and things like that. Like, I'm just, I guess I'm flying by the seat in my pants a little bit today because I've never done this before. We're doing it live, so to speak. We're filming this as I go. This is not rehearsed at all. Like I've got all the components. So here's the RAM, 16 gig of RAM. That needs to go inside the nook as well. We're gonna put them in in a moment. So there's the, whoop. <laughs> So there's the RAM. <laughs> See, butterfingers, great start, isn't it? So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the hardware first and then we're gonna put the software on, the, the, uh, the rock software on. Sounds like a good plan, right? So, we need to open this guy up with a screwdriver. So this is an 8th gen Nook, that's what Intel call it. It's got an i5 processor inside and we're opening up so that we can put the RAM and the hard drive inside, which sounds kind of scary. It's actually not, I have actually done this before on an earlier model because I've got another Nook. 
which I actually had to clean the fan on after a couple of years of use because it, all the dust had built up inside. This does have a fan inside, so that is one of the hardware differences between this particular type of installation and the Rune Nucleus itself, is that this has a fan and the Nucleus does not. So we've got to be careful when we open this up because there are cables attached. You can detach these cables, but I'm not going to because I don't think we really need to. We're going to put the RAM in first, so it has to go into this lowest bay here, and then you, you just push down and clips in, it's held in by, the, by these two clips here. So that's the RAM in, and then the hard drive is gonna go here with this screw. Take the hard drive, see this is the hard drive here, SSD. This has to be clipped into here, like that. See it's secure in this end, so it will ping up, which is why we need the screw. Then we just have to make sure we position it correctly. There. And we screw it down. And now we just put the, these screws back in. So I don't think this process is too hairy, even for newcomers. Well, not yet, it's not anyway. And I say that because I don't really know what lies ahead with installing the software, which is what we're gonna do next. So that's the hardware sorted. Just a quick look at the IO. HDMI out, Ethernet, two USB ports, USB-C, 19 volt power socket. We have a micro SD card here on the side. And then on the front, two more USB ports, headphone jack, oh look, power button. So the hardware part of this is now done. That's ready to be connected to a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. So here's my mouse. Always the wrong way, isn't it? Like that. Take the keyboard, same thing. And that's gonna go in here. Then we need an HDMI connector from our monitor. I've got a little tiny monitor here. And then power, that goes in there. I'm gonna wrap that just and put that there and then we can turn our monitor on and we power it on just to make sure we've got working hardware. Is it working? Is it working? It should essentially give us nothing. No, it should boot to nothing. It should give us an error. Reboot and select proper boot device, which is great because we have no operating system on here right now. We need to put that on. Now, in order to install Rock, I had to pull up the instructions. So I've got this rock install guide ready to go. So that's here. Prepare your NUX hardware, we've done that. Now we're into preparing the NUX BIOS. And that involves another set of instructions which are here. So this screen is only temporary. So is the, the mouse and the keyboard. Once this whole thing is set up, it's just gonna be this NUX connected to a network and with a hard drive full of songs connected USB into the back, like I have with my Nucleus up there. So it's gonna be run what we call headless. That means without a screen. So this page tells us how to configure our BIOS on our NUC. And all we need to do here is make sure that we've got basically the boot settings right. We don't need UEFI, Windows needs that, we don't need that. And we need to make sure that the boot order is first of all USB and then the SSD. So if we look at the screen, I'm just gonna reboot this, and then as soon as the thing comes up, I'm gonna hit F2 and that'll take us into the BIOS. F2, into BIOS. Now this can look a bit hairy, but we wanna take this off. So you can see that our NUC has recognized the 16 gigs of RAM we put inside, which is a good thing. Then I'm gonna to go to this menu here, and I'm gonna go all the way down to boot. 
And then, so now we're on this boot screen. We can ignore this UEFI boot part because we've disabled that. We don't care about that. But we do care about this part. We want to make sure that USB is checked because what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to boot our computer from a USB drive in order to install the Rock OS. And then F10 allows us to save and exit. So we've rebooted, but there's still nothing going to happen here because we don't have the OS on there yet or a USB bootable drive in there yet. So that's what we're going to do now. So we've configured the BIOS on our NUC and now we're going to put the RuneRock ISO on this USB key so we can boot from it. In order to get that ISO onto this key or USB stick, whatever you call it, we need another computer. I've got a Windows laptop here, but you can also do this with a Mac. So the Rock install guide is here. You can see we've done this. We've prepared our hardware. We prepared the BIOS and now we're going to download the image file from here. You know, it's a couple of hundred meg, but it's not, not huge. So I'm just going to put the USB drive into the computer in here ready to write that file to it. And then we're going to use some software called Bellina Etcher. If you saw my Raspberry Pi video, you would have seen this before. We're going to flash from a file. We're going to select our target and that's obviously going to be the USB drive. It's only four gig disk drive, it's only small. So now Bellina Etcher is writing Rune Rock to the USB drive. That's going to take a little while. So maybe this is a good time for coffee. So now I have the Rune Rock ISO on this USB stick. I'm going to insert it into the front of my NUC. I'm going to do Control Alt Delete, give it the three finger salute, reboot, and now it should, fingers crossed, boot from that USB stick. Would you like to install Rune Optimized Core Kit on this device? Yes, I would. So please type a number one or two. Okay, we'll go for one because I want to do that. Enter. Do I want to put it on my 500 gig? Samsung SSD. Yes, I do. Are you sure you want to install on this disk? Good God, man, of course I am sure. Please type yes or no in this time. Oh, my, my German keyboard mapping is all wrong. And now the USB drive is installing the Rune Rock OS to the Samsung hard drive inside the Nook. And that took like 30 seconds and Rune OS install is complete. So remove your USB installer and hit enter to reboot. So let's take this out. So the Rune OS is now running on the NUC. We booted it. It's running fine, but it's searching for a network address. Obviously it can't find a network address because it's not connected to the network while it's sat on my kitchen table. So we need to hook this into a network and then reboot it. So to put this on my network, power, and then Ethernet, obviously, it does not do Wi-Fi. There's no Wi-Fi with Rune Rock. Click that in. Now, before I power it on, actually, this is my hard drive full of tunes. So I'm going to actually connect that to the back as well. And the USB socket, like there. So basically, this is my Rune server, and it's going to scan this hard drive full of songs. I'm going to power it on. One more thing I almost forgot. So I'm now connected to the Nook running Rock using the IP address, its IP address. I found that using an app called Fing, but you can see we've got an issue missing codecs. We click on that, takes us to a help page, I think. Yep. And we have to install manually the codecs that are missing. So we're going to download this file and then copy its contents over to the Nook and then reboot. So I've done that now, I've installed FFmpeg, I've rebooted the Rock server, and you can see everything is tickety-boo here. So now it's time to start Rune. Start Rune here. And you can see it's found my new server here, click Connect. So I've spent some time setting up the Rock server like I had my Nucleus set up. 
So I'm logged in, I've got my hard drive full of tunes, all now fully scanned. I've got Tidal and Cobas integrated. Now you can see everything is working as normal. I've got my zones down here. So we have success. Like we have our Intel NUC running rock instead of having a nucleus. So we've saved about a thousand bucks. So the rock on the NUC is now running. It's a cute little service situation. It's back here behind me. I might put it in the kitchen later on where the nucleus used to be. So instead of spending 1500 bucks on this, we've kind of built our own with an Intel NUC plus RAM plus hard drive. I think the total was about 400 euros from Amazon. I'll put all the links to the, the parts that I've used in this video in the description box below. So if you want to have a crack at this, and I kind of encourage you to do so if you're a Rune user, yeah, 400 bucks instead of 1500. But as you've seen with this video, you either pay with money or with time. So you have to make that choice, which one is right for you. I'm going to be sticking with this nucleus though. Why is that? Well, because I'm going to be giving away this new Nook running rock to one of my Patreon supporters next month. This is how I repay my patrons by giving away. I give away something every week actually. So at some point, February 2021, I'll be giving away this Nook to one of my Patreon subscribers. Anyway, where do we start with this? How do you open this? There's, there's a switch on the back, isn't there? Is it this thing? Peel this back. Yep. Okay. And then we have to unlock. We have to unlock a box. That's amazing. And then it comes off. Like, oh, there's on this side as well. I've never had Sonos gear this expensive before. Some of you will be turning your noses up right now going, why the hell has John got a Sonos 5 in his house? Well, I've got two of them actually. Okay. So I can put this on the Kallax unit behind me where my records are, and I can stream Rune to this because you can also stream Rune to Sonos devices. And the next time you'll see this, I will have spent a few weeks listening to a pair of these, comparing them to the LSX behind me, the KEF LSX. So yeah, if you found this video at all useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of video, the sort of more tutorial type of video, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.